for being here. I just want to thank the Lord that He's with us all. All the way He's with us. I just want to praise His holy, righteous name. I don't deserve anything, but it's through His mercy and through His grace that He blesses me. Many times, God blesses us the way that God wants to bless us, and it might not be the way we want. So, I want to talk about doing all the right things for just a few moments. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 8. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 8. Ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to reveal, and that's the only place to be revealed, by the way, through the power of the Holy Spirit. These verses of Scripture. As God wants to speak to you through these verses. It starts off with this. This is Paul speaking. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust, and the flesh I more. Mm -hmm. Circumcised, for those who want to know about the Apostle Paul, here we go. He was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, he was also a Pharisee. He knew the law. Number six, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, though I counted, I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Amen. Doing all the right things. Many times, we think by doing all the right things, is pleasing to God. I think that's a misconception today of the modern day church. Doing all the right things is pleasing to God. Let's go further with that. What pleases God is more important than doing all the right things that pleases us. Most of the time when we're trying to please God, we're trying to please ourselves. I know a lot of mission trips are that way. People don't do much for God all year, but they might go on a 7, 10, or 14 day mission trip. And itself, there's nothing wrong with it, but they need to be pleasing God all year long. Not just a few days. We should go about and try to do all the right things, of course, we should do that. But if this becomes the main reason, then we have lost what we are so eagerly searching and trying to do and to accomplish. We need to allow Christ to fill our thoughts and saturate our minds. It's all about Christ and not about us. But when we put Christ above all else, it now becomes us. If we want to be more like Christ, we have to be more like Christ. Okay. Not to be more like Christ, so Christ would give us more material things. There's nothing wrong with material things if it's used properly. But it becomes a hindrance and within the Christian community, the world is going to act like the world. I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about you and I that makes up the church. We don't serve Christ to get things, we serve Christ because we love Christ to give things. Amen. And what do we have to give? 
That's the power of God that saves us and leads us through life. The power of the paracletos that, which is inside of each one of us. Paul goes on to say, y'all know who the paracletos is, don't you? Who is it? It's the Holy Spirit. Christ is at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is here with us right now. That's what the Bible tells us. Paul goes on to say, no confidence in self. This is very important. Confidence is trust, is self-assurance. I trust in myself to get things done. I have self-assurance, and it becomes all about what I can do. And that's a danger, people. That is a danger in the modern-day church today. Many times we have confidence in ourselves because we don't allow ourselves to trust anyone else but ourselves. I'm not playing on words here. A lot of times we put up a barrier and other people can't come in. Other people's thoughts can't come in because we trust in ourselves and we trust no one else. We really don't even trust Christ. But we believe in Christ it's not, the, it's not the point of whether someone believes in Christ or not. It's the point that do we trust Christ. I can believe in Christ, but yet I don't trust Christ. And I'm not playing on words. Y'all most of y'all know what I'm talking about. I believe, but now do I trust? That's a very important question. To be, it needs to be answered tonight, today. Right now. I know I believe in Christ, but now do I trust Christ? Oh, I trust Christ if I die today, my spirit would go be with Him. But now do I trust my Christ to take me through whatever situation I might find myself in? Whether it's a financial situation, a physical situation, a marital situation, or whatever the situation is. Do I trust Christ to meet that, that need, whatever I have? Oh, I know, I know God. I know Christ is at the right hand of, is at your right hand right now. I know that. I have no doubt about that. But now do I trust Christ? There's a big difference. Y'all following me on this? Now this is going to unlock this is going to unlock the doors of heaven, if I might say it that way, or open the windows of heaven in order for God to pour out his blessings upon us. Amen. How many, how many of us have been hurt by trusting others? Think about it. How many have been hurt by trusting others? <clears throat> others say they will do this or that, but they never do it. They're just a big puff of wind. Big puff of smoke. It goes up so high that it just dissipates in the clouds. Now, you mentioned you think I'm talking about the world. I expect the world to do that. No, I'm talking about Christians. Amen. Paul is talking about Christians. Amen. You see, we get so centered on the world. Well, the world's going to act like the world. Why should we expect the world to act differently? The world is not going to act differently. We are the ones that are supposed to act differently. Because we have Christ in us. The world doesn't have Christ in them. But we as believers, we're supposed to have Christ in us. Amen? Amen. Paul is addressing Christians. Paul had some hard things to write. He didn't write it to the world. He wrote it to who? Christians. Believers. We have in turn... By all of this, placed a shield, like I said, in front of us. We have a shield. Can't penetrate that shield. No one can enter. No one can penetrate that shield that we have placed in front of ourselves. That's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. Every day, we should grow closer to Christ. I should be closer to Christ tomorrow than I am today. 
You know, we'd be on that. Paul is now saying, I have no confidence in myself. Paul is saying, I don't have the ability, I don't have the strength, I don't have the truth in all things. It's a day-by-day -day growth. Who, who reveals Scripture to us? The Holy Ghost does. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals it. That's why a world, a person that's living in the world that's not saved cannot understand the spiritual significance or the spiritual revelation or the spiritual knowledge of the Word of God. They might have a good memory. Big deal. Big deal. But they do not have the spiritual revelation of the meaning of God's Word. That's impossible. We have to have Christ. We have to. Let's go on. We know that Paul had a great resume. A resume. I call it a resume. It's a resume. Paul had a great resume. Well, as Saul, he did. He even had a greater resume as Paul. But it took him time. It took time for the fellow Christians to trust Paul. Because of what Paul did as Saul to the church. Everything pointed to Paul's ability to meet every standard that was placed before him to become a high priest. In other words, Paul was on his way, I do believe. Makes no difference of becoming the high priest. The religious leaders would look upon him the people would look upon him. The main thought, though, was this. How would God look upon him? When I was going to the seminary, <clears throat> when I was down south because God told me to, and I didn't pick a, a Baptist, God told me to go to school, and that was the closest school I could go to. Amen? But while I was going there, I had the privilege of ministering to Hope Haven, Madonna Manor. In Marrero, that was the boys home. If you read about it in the paper, they had several priests who was abusing the young boys that were there. As I went through seminary, I ministered there. A lot of young boys were saved, but this was before that. And today, as I look and I think right now, I cannot understand how someone can abuse any child. It's beyond my recognition. I do not understand it. I can't comprehend it. But it took place. But I was there for, I think, two years or maybe 18 months or something before I graduated. I, I ministered there. But let's go on. Paul was saying he has no confidence in himself. Then he goes on to say in verse 7, once he once thought what was important. Growing in Christ is allowing Christ to take us where he wants us to go. Where does Christ want you to go today? What does Christ want you to do today? I know early, I believe it was Friday morning, God gave me three words. I got them on the board as you go out the door. Whether you come in or you go out. The three words was this. Get it done. I don't know how it applies to anyone here. But I know how it applies to me. I'm to do what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. Get it done. Those three words have a big significance in one's life. Remember, Paul says that he has no confidence in the flesh. One's thought is simply thinking. Isn't it fascinating how you can think? It's fascinating. What are you thinking about? Self? Others? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about Christ? That's a good question. And each one of us has to answer it on our own. What are you thinking about? 
how to please other people, how to please a denomination, how to please a bunch of pastors or to please a bunch of people. What are you thinking about? If you think about Christ, you're going to make a bunch of people mad at you. Amen. Well, what do you mean? Well, what about Jesus? What did you do with Jesus? What did they do to Jesus? They didn't buy him a souped up camel with a saddle with diamonds in it. No. Jesus walked. I'm so thankful for my truck. Whatever you have, be thankful for it. But what are you thinking about? What one's mind is filled with, their thoughts, is generally what one will do. Or let's say try to do. That's why it's good to have one's mind filled with proper thoughts. Think about it like this. If one's thoughts are centered around Christ, what is one thinking about? What is one going to do? If one's thoughts are centered around worldly activities, what is one thinking about? Worldly activities. What is, what is one going to do? But if you're thinking about worldly activities, you're going to be doing worldly activities because basically what you're thinking about is what you're going to do. If you got thoughts in your mind that shouldn't be there, Turn them over to Christ. Because basically speaking, what you're thinking about is what you're eventually going to do. I don't care where you're at. Whatever you're looking for, if you look for it long enough, you're going to find it. Are y'all agree with me on that or what? Yeah. We all up in age a little bit, outside of a few. You know what I'm thinking about. Don't allow what you did for Christ in the past. And this is very important. What you did for Christ in the past is amen. But don't allow what you did for Christ in the past to get in the way of your relationship with Christ today. How many times have I heard? I've been serving Christ for 30, 40 years. It's time for the young people to come in. Is God finished with you? Maybe the young people need to have a little bit of what you've been through to help them. Amen. Age doesn't stop you from serving Christ. Amen. You serve Christ until it's time to go. Amen. Amen. I've had people say, when are you going to retire? <clears throat> I don't have a farmer's idea. Retire to what? I can go fishing. I don't like to fish. I did all that when I was young. Hunting. I don't like to hunt. I did that when I was young. Tell me what I'm going to do. If I retire, what I'm going to do? Sit in a rocking chair, drink coffee, and die the next day? Oh, uh -uh, baby. We got work to do. Amen. <laughs> we got work to do. Come on now. We got work to do. People are dying and going to hell. Amen. And we're going to go fishing? We're going to go hunting? I'm going fishing for lost souls. I'm going hunt so I can shoot the devil right where he sits down. I'm going to step on his tail. I want him to hide. I'm going to retire. I'm going to rock in the rocking chair. Drink my coffee. Oh, I'm spilling it all over. Oh, I got something to do now. I'll go wash the clothes in the laundry. Amen. Hey, but the machine don't work. Retire to what? Do you know you can do just as much work for Christ when you retire as when you are working doing something else? Do you know that? Because when you're working, you've got other people there that you can minister to. When you retire, you've got other people that you can minister to. It never stops. Never stops. Amen? Amen. Praise 
praise God. Let's say praise God. Praise, praise God. God. I know I ain't all there. I don't claim to be all there, but I am with Jesus. Amen. 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 Everything is worthless. Do you know everything you've got right now is worthless? Mm -hmm. Y'all know that? Created Christ. Amen. It's worthless. You die, you won't leave it. You ain't taking nothing with you. You ain't taking nothing with you. You ain't taking nothing with you, baby. Uh uh. But let's go on and talk about what Paul was talking about. Worthless is simply lacking no worth. Lacking all value. I am worthless. But when I receive Jesus Christ, I become valuable because it's not me anymore. It's Christ in me. Amen. 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 What Paul did on his own, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. I really do. I'm praying that the fire of the Holy Ghost will take place and we will see a revival start right here. But it's going to be started because we are turning loose the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we want the Holy Ghost to start somewhere. Well, Dallas would be a good area. Mm -hmm. What about right here? Oh, we don't want to offend them. Well, that's offend them. I got offended the other day. I took Brother Gary to this little alcohol joint right up there that sells gas. And he had a sign. We now serve alcohol or beer or whatever on Sunday. I got offended. But they don't really care about my feelings. They don't care about my feelings as a pastor. They more care about a few pennies they're going to get. They're not going to get much more than that. I am offended. I'm not stupid. I know if you want to drink beer on Sunday, all you got to do is buy it on a Saturday. Go buy your 15 gallons of Jack Daniels. And I'll go pray for you when you're in jail. In fact, your brother's going there tonight. But I was offended. But who cares about me? I'm just a Christian pastor that listens to people that go through troubles and trials and tribulations. That's all I am. Let's offend him. But let's don't offend the devil. We don't want to offend the devil. Let me tell you something, people. Alcohol is of the devil. Amen. We don't want to offend the devil, but we'll offend him. My brother's only a Christian. We don't need to support him. We don't need to help him. We got to help those that sell. I'm getting on my house. Come on. We don't need to support a church to support a church. Really, a church is supposed to support me. I don't go there. I don't offer any offering there. I don't work there. But I have a light bill. The church is supposed to pay my light bill. Wrong. No, 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 no. The church is not a social a social ministry. Yeah. A church is designed to bring people in. Yeah. I just made half the world mad at me. Right. We're working on the other half now. No, it ain't up the church to pay your life bill. Yeah. I'll help you if I can. considered worthless. It had no value. It held no value. A personal relationship with Christ is more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 More important than anything else. Amen. Amen. No Christ should be our ultimate goal. Consider your values. Do you place anything above your relationship with Christ? Turn it over. Amen. Amen.